Well, good morning, Valley View Chapel. Uh, <laughs> welcome home, right? Uh, I'm so glad that you're tuning in today from your couch, living room, wherever it is. And um, boy, if it's not one thing, it's another, another snowstorm. I hope your kids or your family or you had fun out in the snow last weekend. Probably not for some who are digging out and shoveling, but um, we're grateful, right? Grateful for the changing of seasons, grateful for God's faithfulness through it all. Whether things are easy for us or hard for us or somewhere in between, God has been good, right? He just doesn't stop being good, not in a way that makes our life easy all the time, um, but in a way that shows his faithfulness, his goodness, his steadfast presence with us. And that's what we're praying. That's what I'm praying for today, that God in your living room, in your if you're still in bed, wherever you are, that he'd meet you in a significant way right? Today's not a wasted day. Today's not just a throwaway that uh, you kind of stay home and, and get through and move to tomorrow. Today is an important day. God chose to give it to us. So I'm expecting that he'll redeem every minute of it, especially when we invite him to. So if you would join me in that invitation. Lord, today's not a day that we uh, <laughs> just, just weather Weather is always unexpected, it seems like, no matter what forecasts are. And so, Lord, I'm just thinking that today wasn't a day, uh, at least in this setup, that we expected, even though we're used to things being changed all the time in this season of our lives. We're so grateful that you're faithful, that you don't leave us, you're not surprised by anything, you're steady, you're present. So that's my prayer now, Lord, that you'd be present in a significant way to do something in our lives, in our attitudes, in our motivations, in the desires that we have. I pray that we would truly seek you first before all the other things. Lord, we invite you to be here now. I invite you to be there where people are. I'm so grateful that you answer that prayer. You love to answer that prayer. You love when your people seek you with all their heart. That's when we find you and we meet you. So Lord, do that miracle today. Let us indeed know that we were present with the God of the universe, the God of the weather, the God of our lives and circumstances, and the one who loves us consistently throughout it. Thank you that with you it really is well in our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to join me in singing It Is Well. Um, we'll do all four verses of this great, this great hymn that has defined um, so many people's walks with Jesus over the years, including the hymn writers. And so you can see the lyrics in the comments below the video that you're streaming now. Um, but we'll sing It Is Well. Sure. 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Amen. Well, we're privileged and grateful today to have Reverend Kelvin Walker with us. He is the district superintendent of our district, which is New Jersey and Metropolitan New York, um, the Metropolitan District of the Christian Missionary Alliance. So um, Kelvin, it's great to see you. I'm going to jump over here and bump him onto the screen. So just give us one moment and uh, you can prepare your Bibles and your hearts to, to be together and with the Lord today. Uh, thanks, Kelvin. Morning, Valley View Chapel. It is so good to be with you, at least virtually. I really wish that I could be there uh, in person. I wish we could all be together in person today. But I'm glad for the opportunity to join you, to uh, bring the word of God this morning, and to be a part of what God's doing in you and through you and how he's working at Valley View. And so I just want to, uh, again, say thank you for this opportunity. We want to be looking, we're going to be looking at Jeremiah chapter 29, a very familiar passage for those who, of you who are familiar with uh, this passage. And uh, the title of the message today is Finding God in the Transition. Finding God in the Transition. Will you join me as we pray? God, we are so grateful that you are here. We have just sung about your greatness. How great is our God? We declare that today. We trust that today. We hold fast to that today. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the name above all names and that no matter what goes on, there is no shadow of turning with you as the hymn writer wrote. You are the same yesterday, today and forever, Jesus. And we thank you. And so now we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be poured out as we look into your word and may our hearts be stirred. Uh, open our eyes so we could see. Open our ears so we could hear. Open our hearts so that we will receive and open our wills so that we will respond. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Finding God in the transition. I, I'm a person who loves language, but more than loving language, I am fascinated by words. They bring, they bring things together. There's something about words that energize me. Uh, they convey messages in a way that's relatable and understandable and, and allows for connectivity and cohesion. And there are certain words that I, I love and I love to kind of examine. And those words are called transition words or transition phrases. Uh, they're the type of words that, that tie phrases and thoughts and sentences and paragraphs and ideas together. And they help to show relationship between what was just said and what's about to be said. There's certain words and phrases uh, that are transition phrases, words like undoubtedly or uh, in addition to, or subsequently, or as a result. And one of my personal favorites is this, uh, but I submit to you. I've just said this, but, but I submit to you as I'm about to say something else. I, I think you get the picture. I don't need to give you any more transition words and phrases. But in, in order to connect one phrase to another, we need a good transition word. We need a good transition phrase in order to, to move forward with that. That works well with language. However, it doesn't always work that well or that simply with life. Sometimes with life, the connector words or the, for the transitions are not there. We don't easily see an undoubtedly or an as a result as we are transitioning from one season to another. Sometimes there isn't that obvious, but I submit to you kind of path that makes what's on the other side of the transition clear to us. And when we're in a, a, a life transition, or in the case that we're talking about this morning, a season of leadership transition, a, a word or a phrase to connect us from where we've been to where we're going, it, it's not always apparent because this transition is marked by a season of waiting and trusting, neither of which we like or find comforting. <laughs> 
We want answers. We want connectors. We want the undoubtedly or the as a result or that the subsequently spelled out for us right now. And we want it spelled out clearly. And the discomfort of the waiting and the trusting sometimes overtakes us, leads us to want to take control of the waiting and the trusting people. The problem is this, when we take control of the transition uh, that we're facing for the sake of our comfort and to soothe our inability to wait, we often miss what God is doing in the transition. So let me encourage you this morning with this word or this phrase today. God often does his best work in our seasons of transitions. God often does his best work in our seasons of transition. He's present in the transition and he's working in it, even if we can't see it. So as we we look into the word of God today and as we think about transitioning well with God, uh, this question comes to my mind. How do we find or how do you find God while in transition? How do you remain grounded? How do you remain steadfast? How do you remain positioned for forward movement with your eyes and your hearts focused on the Lord during this season of transition? How do you find God in transition? Remember I said that I love those transition phrases that connect, that keep us moving forward. So here's a transition phrase that I would submit to you will keep you focused and grounded and steadfast and moving forward with your eyes fixed on the Lord and his purposes during the season of transition for your church. Here's the phrase, just remember, just remember. And it's that phrase that then brings us to our text for this morning. Jeremiah 29, for many of us, it's a familiar text. Uh, there's a particular verse in that text that we, that we, that we focus on. Uh, and I would submit to you that sometimes, a lot of times, that verse is taken out of context. And we're going to look at it today. Uh, here's what's going on. God's people have been uh, in exile. They are in exile, in fact, in, a, in, in Babylon. It is, it's in a place that they don't know with people who they do not like and they want out of this place. So they talk to uh, uh, the prophets and one of the prophets, uh, Hananiah, gives them a false prophecy. He tells them it's just going to be a short time and then you're going to be out. And along comes Jeremiah, who not only has to correct Hananiah, but he then also has to give the actual prophecy, the actual word that God has given uh, for his people and letting them know that, yeah, we're in transition (laughs) and you don't like the transition, but God has something to say to you in the transition. So with that in mind, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 29. I'm going to begin at verse four and we're going to uh, read uh, down through several verses here. Uh, Jeremiah 29 verse four says this, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and the diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams that they encourage you to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come to and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your hearts. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I've banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Why do I think this passage is important 
uh, for us this morning. Because sometimes when we're in transition, we feel like we're in exile. <laughs> sometimes when we're in transition, we feel like we have been cast aside. Sometimes when we're in transition, we want to look for the word that is going to get us out. And here's why I say this time, this, this passage can sometimes be taken out of context. Sometimes we look at this and we just pick the one verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But I want to read that verse again. And I want to read it in the context of the verse that's right before it so that we see it. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Basically, the Lord saying to his people, you're in transition. And that transition is taking a period of time. And when that period of time is done, I will fulfill my promise to you, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you. I look at this and this morning, as I look at this in the season of transition that you're in Valley View Chapel, uh, this is what I want to say to you. In this season of transition, just remember, and here's the first thing I want to encourage you to remember. God is still present and still on the throne. So keep your eyes on him. Let me say that again. God is still present and still on the throne. So keep your eyes on him. Let's look back at the scripture. Verse four, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse eight, yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams that they encourage you to have. They are prophesying lies in my name. Uh, 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 in, I have not sent them, declares the Lord. Verse 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Here's what they were doing. They were so uncomfortable, so disheartened, so did not like the transition that they were in or the place that they were in, that they were looking to people to give them a word that would give them encouragement that they're not going to be there long. So they were going to different prophets. And I can imagine in my mind they would go to different prophets and say, uh, can you tell me how long I'm going to be here? And a prophet would say, yeah, it's going to be a while. Settle down. It's going to be 70. You're not a prophet. Let me move on. <laughs> can you tell me? Let me look over here. Maybe you can tell me how long I'm going to be here. Oh, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot longer than you think. You're not a prophet. Let me move on. And then comes Hananiah. Hey, listen, don't worry about it. Help is on the way. Get ready today. It's only going to be a, a short time. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. And God sends Jeremiah to say, yeah, get ready. This is not about your time. This is about God's time. And God says he has a while that he's doing that you're going to be in this place but he's doing something. Friends, I am not here to say that I know from God how long this season of transition is going to be for Valley View. What I do know is this, God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. Fix your eyes on him. Continue to look to him. Continue to live out the words of the writer of Hebrews, that we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. He knows what he's doing. They found themselves in this place and God says, I know what I'm doing. I'm in this. You need a word? Look to me for the word. I've got a word for you. So don't take your focus off of me. I remember when I was in a season of transition myself, uh, and sensing God was stirring something in my heart, uh, not sure what that was going to look like. Uh, and, and it was during this time that I was asked if I would uh, submit my resume uh, for this uh, position of, of district superintendent. And so I, 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 you know, after praying and sensing God saying, yes, put the resume in, one of the things that I asked God was, you know, how's this going to end? <laughs> Uh, you know, is this going to end with me going, being this superintendent? What, what is this? I, you know, why, why? And the only thing God would say to me as an answer was this. 
Do I have your yes, no matter what the outcome is? Do I have your yes, no matter what the outcome is? In that, God was saying to me and reminding me, I'm on the throne. I know what I'm doing. Stop looking for the answer. <laughs> Stop looking for uh, the right person to tell you the right thing. And I had a number of people who during that time were saying, hey, I believe God's saying this. Hey, I sense God saying this. Hey, I sense God saying this. And I wrote those things down, but I didn't count on those things. My eyes were fixed on him. And the only thing he was saying is, do I have your yes? No matter what the outcome. Valley View, I encourage you. God knows what he's doing. The only thing he's asking for you from you this morning is that you would say yes to him and trust that he has plans to prosper you and not harm you. Here's the second one. In this season of transition, just remember this. God is still at work building his kingdom. So stay on mission with him. Let me say that again. God is still at work building his kingdom. So stay on mission with him. This is what he said to them. It's kind of strange, you thought you would think. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Very interesting. I know the plans I have for you. I know how long this is going to take. But I want you to act and live as if you're going to settle down here. I want you to dig in here. I want you to do what I'm asking you to do here. And in fact, I've got a mission for you here. Build houses plant fields, marry off your sons and daughters. And then this very interesting thing, seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I've carried you. Because when the city prospers, you too will prosper. For the longest time, that kind of bugged me. You know, what, what, what does that mean? And then it finally occurred to me, when God did bring his people out of exile, who financed them getting back to Jerusalem, the very place that he took them into exile. So as they are in exile, God is causing that place to prosper because the riches and the prosperity of that place became what God used in order to get them back to Jerusalem. You see, friends, we never know what God's plans are for those seasons of transitions. We never know how God is working in those seasons of transition. But what we do know is that God puts us on mission and wants us to stay on mission with him, even in the midst of the transition. So I did a little research about Valley View Chapel. Let me let me let me tell you something. I saw some things that were very encouraging. Let me read to you what I saw about you. Valley View Chapel, leading individuals through relationships to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. Valley View Chapel. Existing to advance Christ's kingdom through loving, spirit-led spirit -led relationships that glorify God by evangelizing the lost, edifying the equipped, uh, and equipping the believer, and empowering disciples for service. Valley View Chapel, acknowledging uh, dependence upon God and making prayer the first priority. And Valley View Chapel, God's word is the source of truth and guidance. Valley View Chapel, all that Valley View does is permeated by a spirit of worship. Valley View Chapel, uh, committing themselves to nurturing relationships and families, small groups, and church as a whole. Valley View Chapel, realizing that all you have belongs to God. Valley View Chapel, intentionally joining God in his pursuit of those who do not know him. Valley View Chapel, uh, using your particular giftedness to be salt and light in the culture and the community. Friends, God's not necessarily saying to you, uh, sit down and wait and don't move and do anything. God's saying, I've already given you mission. I've already given you an assignment. Basically, while you're in transition, plant, build, 
Seek the prosperity of the place where you are, because when that place prospers, you too will prosper. Here's what God's people were trying to do. Basically saying, God, you said this is going to be a long time. That's fine. I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait on you. And I can imagine God saying, are you done yet? Because I've got work for you to do. Friends, we could either sit <laughs> and wait on God. Or we could say, God, I'm going to join you in the mission you've given. And I'm going to be on assignment with you as I'm waiting on you. God is still on mission. So I want to encourage you. He's still at work. He's building his kingdom. Be on mission with him. And then finally, in this season of transition, just remember this. God is still revealing himself and transforming lives. So keep seeking him. Let me say it again. God is still revealing himself and transforming lives. So keep seeking him. He said, you will seek me and find me when you seek with me, when you seek me with uh, your whole heart. But let me read from verse 12. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back. There's so many times in transition when we feel like God is hidden. So many times in transition, we feel like we can't see him. So many times in transition, when we feel like there is a cloud there and somewhere uh, behind that cloud, God may be there, but we're not sure. There are so many times in transition when we feel like the veil that had been torn when Christ died on the cross has been put back up and, it, and somehow we're being blocked. And God says, no, keep seeking me. You want to find me. I will be found by you. Friends, God is still revealing himself. God is still transforming lives. God is still making a path clear. Keep seeking him. I think about the words of Jesus. Ask, keep asking, and it shall be given to you. Seek, keep seeking, and you will find. Knock, keep knocking and the door shall be opened. When we ask and we seek and we knock and it feels like there's no revelation, that's when we get to the place where we're tempted to take control of the transition. But I wanna encourage you, God is still revealing himself. Though you may not see it yet, God is still revealing himself. And as you keep seeking and as you keep asking, and as you keep knocking, then the door will be opened. He says, I will be found. I am not hiding myself from you. But as I'm revealing myself, I want you to stay on mission. <laughs> as I'm revealing myself, know that I'm on the throne. Keep trusting me. As I am revealing myself, Know that I will bring you through this transition. We want God to bring us out. And God says, I'm going to bring you through. God is still present. He's still on the throne. So keep your eyes on him. God is still at work building his kingdom. So stay on mission with him. God is still revealing himself and transforming lives. So keep seeking him. I thought, how do I sum this up? How do I uh, bring this to a close? How do I restate this so that it uh, gets at what we might be feeling in this, but also makes it clear where we need to look in this? And so I put together a, a, a poem to end this. And so uh, I invite you just to listen. Transition, transition. You're in a transition. Waiting for this new leader to be put in place while you anxiously imagine how he'll fit in this space. And at times, it feels as if the ground is shifting, shifting, 
shifting into a season that's unfamiliar. You're yet holding on, but sometimes you inwardly shiver and you wonder what will the other side of this transition bring? On the one hand, you're hopeful, but on the other hand, you confess there is a sting, a sting of walking into the unknown. And while you have faith, sometimes you feel alone because transition often feels like exile in your soul. You feel exiled on an island while you wait for your ship to come in. You try to face it with a grin, but deep down you admit that hope while navigating transition often sounds like a big contradiction because how can you fully hope without knowing what you're hoping for? Looks like on the other side of our hoping is quite unnerving. This hoping in transition and, and, and you're tempted to embrace a mission that takes matters into your own hands. But here's the good news, my friends. We have a hope that never ends. For our hope is not in the people that will lead us. Our hope is in the person that has freed us. You see, things, people, seasons, they change. There's a time to stay put and a time to move away. Yet we hold to this truth that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forever. He faithful will remain. So be still, my soul. Take your hands off. He's got this. And not one little detail will he miss. Therefore, let's walk through this transition with confidence that his work is always excellent. And no matter how long or short of a transition we're facing, he knows his plans for us to prosper us, to build into us. There is a future and a hope because of who we hope in. So let's hold on to him and seek him. Don't give up and don't give in. Be confident in this. He has not changed. So let's keep our hope in him for he is present and able to keep you through, through it all to the end. So trust my words, my friends. Better yet, trust his word. For I submit to you that he is faithful and he will see you through this transition. Friends, you can find God in this transition. He will be found. Let me pray. Lord, in this season of transition, would you build within each and every one of us a, a fortified trust in you? That you are in this, you know what you're doing, you know what it's like on the other side, and that as we continue to trust you, as we continue to keep our eyes on you, as we continue to be on mission with you, and as we continue to seek you, you will be found. You will reveal yourself and your will. And you will show yourself once again to be the God who is faithful, even in the midst of transition. And we pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.